In our last video, we looked at how we can use PowerPoint to create presenter-led videos. In this video, we'll continue to look at some of the hidden tools that PowerPoint has to offer, this time focusing on screencasting. Screencasting is when you create a video of your computer screen or of a specific application open on your computer, including the audio, mouse movements and clicks. This is an incredibly useful tool for when you want to demonstrate things to students, because it's so much more useful to show what you want your students to do rather than just tell. So, for example, you want to show students how to submit their assignments or find relevant course information. You want to show students how to join an online class. You want to demonstrate working on a problem while explaining the steps. Or you want to show students how to add the sources from this week's lesson to their referencing manager. According to some research, screencasting can potentially foster student engagement, foster deeper learning, self-efficacy and contribute to teaching effectiveness. While according to Mayhew, it encourages engagement with assessment support, improves satisfaction and can increase student perceptions of their assessment literacy proficiency. Screencasting can also be an effective way to connect distance learners with their tutors, providing a sense of one-to-one -one tuition for students while maintaining the scalability needed by teachers with large cohorts. To add a screencast to your PowerPoint, go to the Insert tab and then click on the button Screen Recording. Your screen will go greyish and at the top you'll see a small box appear. The first thing you need to do is to tell PowerPoint which area of the screen you want it to record. You can select the area of the screen by clicking and dragging across. This is particularly handy if, for example, you want to record one half of the screen while having your notes while other documents open on the other half of the screen. For example, I might want to record my browser, but have a Word document open as well in which case I can click the menu bar of my browser and drag it to one side of the screen. You'll see this momentary animation of the lines expanding to fill one half of the screen. If I let go of the button now, the browser will expand to fill that half and I can now choose what application I want to fill the other half. Back in PowerPoint, I can now simply select that area of the browser that I want to record. If you want to record the whole screen, you can simply use the selection tool and drag it across the whole screen. It's worth remembering though that anything inside the selection area will be recorded and will appear in the video, so if you don't want students to see your list of bookmarks for internet dating websites or your open Angry Birds apps that you use during boring online meetings, then adjust your screen accordingly. No one will ever know. When you've made your selection, you have another couple of options. You can choose to have your microphone on or off. If you want to add commentary and explanations as you go, you'll need to make sure that this is turned on. The other option here is whether you want the cursor to be visible or not. If you're demonstrating anything, then you will want the cursor to be switched on so that students can clearly see where and what you're clicking. When you're ready, Click the record button. You'll be given a short countdown which gives you the chance to make sure that you've got the right apps open on the screen, after which you can demonstrate what you need while narrating normally. When you're finished, move the cursor to the top of the screen and the small menu will reappear giving you the option to end the recording. The video will now appear as an object in your PowerPoint slide. You can move it, resize it or play it back. If you want to re-record, just delete the video and start the process again. Simple as that.